Hey, my name is Milan, and in today's video, I want to talk about Amazon S3 and how to use pre signed URLs. I'm going to discuss what pre signed URLs are, how and where you would want to use them, and what are the benefits that they offer. Let's start from the drawing board, where I'll try to briefly explain why we would need pre signed URLs and what benefits they can bring compared to a scenario where all of the requests towards S3 would go directly from our API. Amazon S3, which is short for Simple Storage Service, was one of the core services that was released when AWS came out. I also want to say a huge thank you to AWS for sponsoring this video and helping me bring the many AWS services closer to the .NET community. So in a typical .NET applications, our users need to store some sort of documents or files in the cloud. And one way how you could implement this is with the server as an intermediary. So let me add the application server. Let's paint it in red, for example. And the request typically flows from the client side to the application server, where we send the entire file to the server, and then the server uploads the file to the S3 bucket. This returns some sort of response where we can decide what we want to return back to the client. And let's say we return some sort of document key that the client can use to now reference this file so that they can access it from the server. The benefit of this approach is improved security because we definitely want to make our S3 bucket private and we don't want our clients tampering with the documents in the bucket directly. However, the drawback is we are taking this document and sending it from the client side to the server and then copying it again from the server to the S3 bucket. So we're doing some unnecessary work here. And another drawback, which is especially apparent when working with large files, is this is going to be really slow. So what pre signed URLs allow you to do is to expose access to your S3 bucket with a pre-configured URL that contains the required credentials to authenticate the request with S3. And we can also control what are the allowed operations with the pre-signed URL and the lifetime of the pre-signed URL. So in that example, so let me draw another flow here, which is going to use a pre-signed URL to upload the file to S3. So we still have our user and we have the application server. And what happens now is the client sends a request to the server to get a pre-signed URL. The server is typically going to access S3 to obtain the pre-signed URL, validate the bucket and so on. And then we can return this pre-signed URL back to the client. And then the client can use the pre-signed URL to upload directly to S3. So let me add here, for example, a pull request, which is going to upload to S3. And let's also add the document to make this obvious. So now we're still keeping our S3 bucket secure. However, we allow temporary access to the bucket using this pre signed URL, which can only be obtained from the application server. So the client would have to be authenticated with the server to begin with for this to even be possible. And the same thing applies when we want to get something from the S3 bucket, we can generate a pre signed URL that allows us to read a value from S3. And then we can send a get request to that pre signed URL and get the document. Now let's jump into the AWS console and I'll quickly show you how this works. So I'll be using US East 1 as the region and let's head over to S3. So you want to create a general purpose bucket. I have a few of them and we're going to be using this one in the demo. But for now, let's try to create a new bucket. And here you have to input the name for your bucket. But what I really want to show you is this part here, which by default, blocks public access to anything inside of this bucket. And this is a default because AWS recommends that you turn on block all public access. And then you have to make sure that your application still works without public access enabled. So I already discussed how we're going to solve this. We'll use pre signed URLs. And of course, from the back end, we can actually authenticate to S3 and perform any request that we need to do. So the overarching idea here is security and keeping our buckets closed to the public. And here's the bucket I want to use. And I I already have a document inside. So let's visit that just to show you what I mean. So here's the object URL. And if I try to access this by clicking on the link, we're going to get a response like this telling us that access has been denied. So if I go back to this object, what I can actually do is open it directly. And this allows me to actually see what I have inside. So you can see this is some sort of invoice, which I generated randomly on the server. Now let's go back to our object. And another option that you have here 
is you can share this with a pre-signed URL. You can configure how long the URL can live. Let's say it only lasts for one minute and then you can create this URL. It's copied to the clipboard and now you can send a GET request or just open this URL in the browser and you'll be able to see the same document. So that's what we want to emulate from our backend application. I'll demonstrate this from a .NET 9 web API where I already have a couple of things set up to make this demo simpler. So first let me show you which NuGet packages I'll be using. You want to be using the AWS SDK for S3 and you can see I have the latest version installed which at the time of recording this video is 4.0.6.9. This is what's going to allow us to obtain free sign URLs for our buckets. So in the setup here I have an S3 settings object which I'm just pulling from application settings where I can define the region and the bucket name I want to be using. So if I go into my app settings, you can see the region is going to be US East 1 and the bucket name is going to be MJ Tech Invoices, which is the bucket that I already created. And then you need to register the S3 client as a service with dependency injection. So I'm first pulling the options from my application settings and using that to initialize the S3 config. And finally, I can create a new client. And this client is what you want to be using in your API endpoints to work with S3. So let me show you how easy it is for us to configure this. I'll create a post endpoint which I'll call pre-signed. And here we will need a couple of arguments. So let's say I provide the content type or the file that I want to upload as a query parameter. Then I need access to the iAmazon S3 service. So let's call this the S3 client. And I'll also inject the iOptions instance of the S3 settings object. And let's call this S3 options. So how you obtain a pre-signed URL is by initializing a request. This is very common with many AWS SDKs. You create a request object, you send that request object, and you get back a response. So what we are looking for is a get pre sign URL request. So I'm going to initialize this, and then here we can set a couple of values. So the first one is the bucket for which we want to obtain our pre sign URL. So I'm going to supply the bucket name from the S3 options instance. Then we want to pass in a key that is going to uniquely identify this object inside of the bucket. The next thing we want is the expiration time for the pre sign URL. And let's make this intentionally short. For example, one minute. It should be enough for a client to obtain a pre sign URL and immediately upload to S3 before the URL expires. Then the content type I'm going to specify from my query parameter. And the verb is important here because it's going to determine which type of request can be executed. And let's say that this is a put request. Now, when it comes to the key, for the object, you can create virtual files in S3 by defining your keys with a slash. And this allows you to easily add some structure to your S3 buckets. And then from here, we just need to get the pre sign URL by saying S3 client get pre sign URL and we pass in the request. And from here, I can just return results OK and I'll pass in an object containing the key. So let's pull that from the request. I'll say key is equal to request key and then let's pass in the pre signed URL. Of course, I have to new this up for this to be an anonymous object. And of course, anytime you're working with S3, you could run into an exception. So you may want to catch this. Typically, this is going to throw an Amazon S3 exception. And in the catch statement, you can decide what you want to do. Let's say I want to return a bad request and I'll say something like error generating pre-signed URL. So now I should be able to start my application and test this out real quick. The Swagger UI is going to open by default. And let's say the content type is application slash PDF. I'll send this request to the API and you see we land on the breakpoint. We initialize the request to get get a pre sign URL. And when I execute this, we get back a string value representing this URL. I'll press continue. And you can see we get a response in Swagger, which contains the key for the object that we want to upload, as well as the pre sign URL that we can use to now upload this document directly to S3. Now, let me show you how we could use this from some client application. So I'll implement this in the same endpoint where we are also obtaining the pre sign URL. And I'm doing this just for simplicity, but let me add a comment here that this actually actually represents the client code. So some client application, it could be a JavaScript single page app, gets the pre sign URL, and then what does it do? So we need some sort of way to send an HTTP request to S3. Inside of a .NET app, I can use this by creating a new HTTP client. So let's do that. Then we need some PDF document to upload because this is what we specified as the content type. So let me get that. 
and I'll use a new service called an invoice generator. I created this ahead of time and what it does is it creates a dummy invoice in memory and then it turns it into a PDF document and stores it locally on the file system. So we can now read this file from the file system, but first we have to generate it. So I'll say invoice generator create. This is an async method and it returns the direct path to this file. So then I can create a stream by saying file open read and specify the file name. And then what we want to do is to create a new content object. This can be a stream content. And here I can pass in the file stream. And I also want to set the headers, more specifically the content type header, where I can initialize this using a new media type header value and I'll specify the same content type that we are using to initialize the pre-sign URL. Another way to write this is in line by accessing the headers property and then setting the content type. And then the next step is just using the HTTP client to invoke the respective method using the verb that we specified in the pre-sign URL. So I'll have to use both async. I can specify the pre-sign URL as the first argument and the content as the second argument. So then we want to get back the HTTP response message. And let's say if the HTTP response message is a success status code, then I'm going to return results okay Otherwise, we can return results bad request and let's say failed to upload to S3. So let's test out this flow. It combines the server and the client code. So I'll send a request to hit this breakpoint and we can first obtain a pre-signed URL. Then we initialize the HTTP client and we create a dummy invoice. So what this is going to do is use handlebars.net to create an HTML document with some dummy data. And then I'm using Puppeteer Sharp to turn this into a PDF document, which I'm going to store on the file system and return the file name. So I'll go back to the endpoint and press continue here. And after a few moments, we should be able to generate the PDF document and store that on the file system. Now, the reason this is taking so long is because of a cold start. This is the first time I'm generating a PDF, but eventually we managed to store this locally on the file system. So now I can open this file in a file stream and then use that to create the stream content. And it's really important that you set the content type header because if the put request that you are sending to the pre-sign URL doesn't exactly match the arguments that you specified when creating the pre-sign URL, you're going to get back a failed request. Now in this example, I can send a request and we get back the response message. The status code is 200 and we've managed to create this document. So I can copy the key value, which you can see here. So I'm going to copy just the GUID part and I'll press continue. Now we get this response back in Swagger UI, that's okay, but let's check if this is actually present in our S3 bucket. So I'm now inside of the S3 bucket and if I navigate to the invoices folder and paste in the value, you can see we find the one document that I just uploaded. But we still can't access this based on the object URL because it's not public. However, I'm going to show you how to fix this again using pre-sign URLs. The one thing we will need is the key for our object. I'm going to copy this value and then let's go back to our code. I'll create this in a separate endpoint. This is going to be a get endpoint. So let's say app map get. Let's call this pre-signed again. And this doesn't have to be an async method. I want to accept the object key as a query parameter. I need the S3 client to get the pre sign URL and the S3 settings to access the bucket name. In the request delegate, we again want to create a new get pre sign URL request. And let's make this a bit faster. So we have to specify the bucket name. This will come from S3 options, value, and then bucket name. The object key is going to be invoices, and then the key value that I specified here. The verb is going to be get, and let's say this expires in one minute from now. Then I'll use the S3 client to obtain a pre sign URL, and we can say S3 client get pre sign URL, pass in the request object, and let's return this value from our client. I'll say return results okay. Let's initialize an anonymous object that gives me access to the pre sign URL. So let's test this out. In the Swagger UI, there's now a get endpoint where I can pass in the object key and get back a pre sign URL. So if I try to access this pre sign URL in a new browser window, I'll be able to observe the document that I uploaded. And in this case, it's a PDF document. So this is how you can allow temporary access to this document from your client applications. For example, when a client needs to download some document or when they need to view it in the 
UI of the client application directly. I hope you enjoyed this video about working with Amazon S3 pre-sign URLs. If you want to learn more about working with S3, including uploading large files, then I recommend that you watch this video next. Make sure to smash the like button on your way out. If you want to grab the source code for this video, it's going to be available for free in the pinned comment right below. And until next time, stay awesome.